I'm Pastor George Borkard, and this is another Higher Things video short. The Council of Nicaea. That's the subject of today's Higher Things video short. Like, subscribe, ring the bell, get the app, donate. Like our videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel, ring the bell for notifications, get our app, Google, iTunes, Amazon, and donate your tax-deductible gift keeps us a youth organization all about passing the faith to the next generation. Keeps us a rolling. And we need your gift in these dark times. Give today. It's Friday. It's Finker Friday. Dean, Friday's with the Dean? I, I, I don't know. But we're going to talk about the Council of Nicaea with Pastor Aaron Finker, the Dean of Higher Things. Here he is. There he is. How you doing, Pastor Finker? I I am here and I I'm back. And you didn't even have to uh, twist my arm or anything. I came back willingly. I came back. It's 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 because of um because of your great love for the 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 Nicene Creed, right? The Council or to, of Nicaea. Or to just rub my beard in your face. That's that's probably what it is. <laughs> Wish I had a beard. Tell me everything you tell me about the Council of Nicaea, which today we celebrate. This is June the 12th, Nicene Creed, 325. Go. Huh. 325. Uh, they're in the city of Nicaea. Uh, uh the, to start a two-month-long pastors meeting, which sounds about as fun as it sounds. But it was good because it wasn't just. I mean, they did talk about boring pastor stuff. That was part of what they did, like how to run the churches, what the clergy should do, what kind of people can be clergy, how you help the lay people, all sorts of stuff. Who's in charge of what? That sort of boring stuff. Um, but the main thing they were talking about is a dude named Arius. Um, the uh, We call him the arch heretic, which is like the arch nemesis. Like he's the chief bad guy. Um, of the Council of Nicaea because he wants to deny um, who Jesus really is. That's that's pretty much it. So um, really, um, for about two to three, you know, hundred years before this, the church has been wrestling um, with like what to do with what Jesus says. That's pretty much it. Um, how do we understand? what scripture tells us about who Jesus is. Um, there was basic ag agreement on what he did, you know, died and rose. Um, but who he was, well, that's kind of tough. Uh, you, you run into statements where, you know, father is greater than I, or, you know, but at the same time, he'll say, I and the father are one. And what do you do with this? And the church wrestled for two to 300 years on this. And then the arch heresy, heretic uh, Arius comes along and says, ah, I have the answer. Um, the son of God was created. And there was a time that there, that he was not, that was their, their, um, you know, if they were, uh, had a uh, billboard sign, that's what it would say. It would say there was a time when he was not. It, it, it even sounds really good in Greek. Ain pota ota uk ain. Yeah, it sounds catchy. Ain pota ota uk ain. There was a time in which it was not. Um, that didn't it agree with the culture of the time as well? Didn't it? Didn't that resonate with the the Greek and 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 Roman culture? Yeah, there was a lot of Greek philosophy that they were trying to use. To, again, the church had kind of brought this in because they were trying to to confess and understand various statements of scripture. And you know, we're. I mean, we. Our sinful mind can't understand who God is, and He reveals Himself to us in Jesus um, as as our our Savior, as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Which Athanasian Creed, check out that video. Um, but uh, it's it's hard for us to kind of come to grips in human language, like how do we say this faithfully? Um, and so, using some Greek philosophy, it kind of jived with that. So, and and besides that, it makes sense. And our sinful flesh is always wanting to go after things that make sense um, to us, uh, especially when it comes to uh, not just who Jesus is, but like our works. That's why works righteousness always comes back too in the church is because it makes sense to us. 
it's how we roll in the universe. Um, we're not used to things just sort of being. Um, and so that fits with Jesus too. Let's make him a created being. Um, there was a time when he was not. Um, ein pate hata uk ein. And then the, you know, the, 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 you know, the, the Orthodox would like graffiti on an extra ooh, just to like, you know, negate what Arius said. So they'd, they'd chant back, they'd, they'd add another no. There, there was not a time when he was not. It, it wasn't very catchy, but, you know, they tried. You know, uh, what, I, what I love, uh, let me bring me back. What, what I love about Arius is, uh, first of all, I teach my confirmats to boo Arius. I think he should be booed. Every time we mention his name, um, Arius, whoo, what a nasty guy. But um, he he was really slippery, wasn't he? Um, homo Uzius, homoi Uzius. Can you tackle that? Okay, so one, he was smooth. He was he was a smooth guy. Like he had a pretty hefty following. Um, I mean, he was he was a cool dude. I mean, and that's the thing is, you know, we should be thankful for Nicaea because when somebody like Arius shows up, uh, apart from the Spirit protecting us through the Word. We just run right after that that sort of person, smooth talker, um, walk the walk, you know, of a of a faithful uh, a pastor, faithful bishop, and well, he was wrong of scriptural language. Like that was the other thing too. Is Arius was big on the Bible. He was big on the Bible. And at the at the Council of Nicaea, they're trying to use as much biblical language as possible. And there were times when. You know, the the Orthodox would say, like, well, what if we use this statement from Scripture? You know, um, he's begotten. And they would the uh, the area supporters would be like winking at each other like, oh, no, that's fine. Let him use that word. We can use that word. And so they had to find a way of reconciling finding a word that would stop all, all the, the areas arguments. And they came up with homoousius or of the same substance. Um that the son and the father are one in substance. They're both God, complete God. Um, Jesus is true God from true God, light from light, really God or very God. That means like he's really God um, from real from real God. So um, homo usius means of the same substance. Arius would kind of retort back, well, he's of the of similar substance. And in the Greek, that's homo usius. Um, so he just he threw in an extra letter and it's like. Uh, I can still use that. Um, so he was always slick and smooth trying to keep his his teaching going. So so you, you get this, and this is huge. It's only an I. That's it. That's how different we are. It's only an I. But yet, being of similar substance and being of the same substance doesn't save us, right? Only the right. only God dying on that cross can save us, right? Correct. Take a minute. So, so the whole thing of Nicaea really boils down to this, is what, what we all learned in our catechism. I mean, yes, it's what we uh, receive in, well, the majority of the Nicene Creed um, and the Apostles' Creed, the Athanasian Creed. We receive all that as gift. It all flows out of Nicaea, really out of the scriptures, and we rejoice in that gift. But what does it come down to? It comes down to the line in uh, the, the creed for us and for our salvation came down from heaven, was crucified for us. Or as your catechism teaches it, uh, I believe that Jesus Christ, true God, begotten of the Father from eternity and also true man born of the Virgin Mary is my Lord, who has redeemed me, a lost and condemned person, purchased and won me from all sins, from death and from the power of the devil, not with gold or silver, but with his holy, precious blood. And with his innocent suffering and death. That's what Nicaea is all about. That statement that the Jesus who died for you, shed his blood for you, rose for you, uh, claims you as his own, is not just a man, not a created being, but God himself come into the world to die, to save you. That, that that's how important your salvation is to God, that he became uh, the son of God did, became a human being in order to redeem you. That's what Nicaea is all about. And and 
So that's why we rejoice and still commemorate Nicaea. Pastor Aaron Ficker is the Dean of Higher Things. Um, we're going to have to have you come back next week and talk about the, the, Ni the Nicene Creed since we have Nicaea done. But if we talk about the Nicene Creed, I will get in big trouble about going too long. Uh, Pastor Finker, thank you very much for joining us. Why don't you tell us where uh, the, the congregation you serve again? I serve uh, Bethlehem and Emmanuel Lutheran churches in Bremen, Kansas. There it is, Bremen, Kansas. I was, oh, I was so, I have it right here, but I didn't want to mispronounce the name again. Bremen, Bremen, I'll get it right. We'll see you next week, Pastor Finker. Next week, the Nicene Creed. Hey, just remember, what a great gift the Council of Nicaea is. 325. Do a little Google, but but what a great intro and starter. And next week on Friday, when we have time with the Dean, we'll talk about the Creed, the Nicene Creed, which is said every Communion Sunday. I'm Pastor George Borkart, Thor's on Patrol, and this has been another Higher Things video short.